In World at War and Black Ops, reusing maps was rather common for the zombies mode, more so in World at War, but after Resurrection, a zombie specific DLC for Black Ops, the mode saw a much bigger budget for Black Ops 2. Now maps would be bigger, more ambitious, and completely original. Except in two instances. The first is Transit, which features the bunker from Nocturne Toten as an easter egg. Actually, just the spawn room, not the whole thing. I think it's safe to assume that they just ported it over from Black Ops 1 instead of remaking it. Overall, it looks identical, but a couple changes were made. In order to keep players in the spawn room, the stairs are collapsed and blocked by debris, and the help door is blocked by dirt and one of the cabinets on the right. Of the five barriers, two of them in the front were cleared out so that the room could be accessed. The other three still act as entries for zombies, but cannot be repaired. There's a hole in the ceiling over the area where you'd spawn, which I assume was added to let players see more of the map. And from what little we can see of the second floor, it appears to be very empty. The doorway and the window that connected the two rooms is also gone for some reason. The writings on the wall were removed. And finally, changes were made to individual assets around the room. Some were replaced, like these wooden crates that were swapped for more filing cabinets, and the shelves were replaced with a different model. Some, however, were just removed, like this box, the sandbags here, and the bricks in the rubble. My best guess is that these changes were made to save memory. The shelves, for example, can be found in other parts of the map, so they must have chosen to reuse those instead of importing a unique shelf model for this one specific part of the map. And the filing cabinets look to be the same model from Black Ops, but it must have been better to copy and paste a couple more instead of using the wooden crates. And anything that wasn't super important just got cut. So with this being an easter egg, it makes sense that the bunker is incredibly similar. All that's really different is that it's accessible from the outside, and some of the assets inside were changed. Now this may come as a surprise, but Nuketown Zombies is actually from the multiplayer map Nuketown, which is from Indiana Jones. What's funny about this one is that Usually maps were reused as a way of saving development time, but in this case, the whole selling point of the map is that it's the same one from multiplayer. Once again, I'm assuming that it was ported in from Black Ops 1, but with extensive modifications. Nuketown Zombies takes place after the nuke was detonated, so the map is in ruins. Everything has been both retextured to look dirty, charred, and in some areas radioactive, as well as remodeled to look heavily damaged. There are holes in the buildings, light posts were melted, Fences are shattered, and the ground is fractured and uneven. There's also wind blowing through the map, so a lot of things were animated to account for that. However, these are visual changes, but there are quite a few alterations to the layout that were made as well. Ironically, Nuketown would likely have been too spacious to be a good zombies map, so Treyarch used a lot of wreckage to fix that. You'll find this being used around the map to make everything tighter, either by making passages more narrow, or by breaking up open areas. The garages of both houses were also blocked, in the greenhouse, the door has been lowered, forcing you to crawl under, and the back door is blocked with a rock. The one in the yellow house can be accessed to the inside and the back of the house, but not the front. Although the garages are still dangerous, they would have been much easier to get through than the houses themselves, which is likely why they were blocked off. But the biggest change made to the layout was blocking the side paths of the houses. Had they been left open, it would have been very easy to run trains around the whole house, but by blocking them, the map is now turned into three distinct segments connected by very risky bottlenecks. I also want to bring up the fact that you can mantle through the windows on the second floor of each house. Climbing and mantling in zombies is really rare, only haven't been seen once before on transit, but on transit it was tied to some of the buildable items, whereas on Nuketown it's just a part of the map in these two specific spots. I assume the reason for this is that they wanted players to have an extra way out of these rooms, otherwise they would have just been dead ends that no one would ever enter. They could have maybe used some debris along the bottom to let players walk right through. That's kind of what they did with the moving truck. The ground is elevated enough that you can walk right up from the sides. But that would probably have looked unnatural. So they must have just decided to allow players to climb through like you can in multiplayer. Which is both beneficial for gameplay and saves them from having to make unnecessary changes. So as you can see, there's a lot of differences between this version and the original. I can't imagine they would have built it from scratch. But just about everything has been changed which sort of makes it a Ship of Theseus type situation. So in conclusion, the Resurrection DLC had a noticeable impact on the development of Black Ops 2. Although it didn't always equate to quality, Treyarch now had the power to make the maps that they wanted to make. Reusing maps was no longer necessary, but they did still do it a couple times as an easter egg and as fan service.